Welcome to sunny Spain. Oh, there's a fair bit of traffic in sunny Spain. Here we go. Here we are, right by the sea, and we'll see you today. There you go. And well, we're in a town called Mojaca, or right near Murcia. And well, I, I thought I'd uh, just do a quick little video for you. Let's come and have a little look and see what it's like here and uh, do a little walk. There you go, you can even have a tower if you want. Well, it's been lovely here, it's uh, 30 degrees. It's the, uh, it's, a, it's about the, what's the date? It's the 12th of April. So we're talking out a couple place, nice little place. Oh look, cod and chips, oh, who doesn't love cod and chips? Wait a minute, I know. I know. Let's have a look. Economical rides. Jeez, mate, it's love to you. I love your channel. Oh, what a coincidence. Imagine that. How are you doing? Oh, look, you get two pints. Look. Yeah, well, I've got one in for my invisible friend. Jeez, I'll tell you what, I'll have to nick his pint, don't we? Yeah, well, if you order for an invisible friend, it's a good way to cover up your alcoholism. Well, the, well uh, you can say, yeah. oh, no, he's going to arrive. And then when he doesn't, you just drink it anyway. Well, there we go, I mean, you can't go wrong. There you go, a tip for, top tip for you. Yeah. If you need to get your drinking in, have an invisible friend. I uh, say, so, uh, come on, I'll uh, nick his pint and uh, don't want any people laughing at you. Oh, cheers, mate. Cheers. Nice of you to um, yeah. come down to southern Spain. Right, right, I'll put mine there. So, this is actually a new thing for me on the channel. I've been doing, I guess you know, I've done a fair few interviews in the past, um, but we're going to do a new segment called Five Questions, Five Points. How does that sound to you, mate? Sounds like hard work. Bloody hell. Let's, bear, get, this, let's bear, get this graft in first. Bearing in mind, while you were sleeping, I was drinking. <laughs> well, there you go. Right, so we're getting a run in. This is um, our third or fourth point, and let's get this business on the road. Point number one, question number one. Oh, one sec. Got, I've got a fly in my beer. Yeah, you've got extra protein. Bloody hell. I tell you, this, There's no extra charge. It wouldn't you surprise can, me if they did charge it, you some places you can, you can eat that. Well, the f first thing I'd like to know about you, I think um, a lot of places that we, a lot of interviews, the last one we had with the ex driver, I think we learnt a lot about your bike history. So uh, we ex Exmouth Biker. Yeah, so uh, on Exmouth Biker channel, we did yeah. the, live, the live chat. Yeah. And I think we learnt a lot about your bike history, about your time in Germany, different bike chat. But we didn't really learn much about you, and that's what I'm interested in. So, where are you, where are you originally from? Where, where, let's start off with that. Originally. Yeah, I'm from Paul in Dorset. I okay. was born in Bournemouth, and then we moved to Paul when I was about three or something. Okay. Um, but really, I got into biking because um, that was the first vehicle that I could ride. Basically, when I turned 16, I could ride a 50. Yeah. And uh, my brother was the same. He he got a. My parents bought him a DT50. Yeah. And uh, that was a new bike. And then he got that. And then he progressed then onto his. Um, when he was 17, back then you could ride a 125 on L plates. Yeah. So he got a 125, and then he took his test. But he's two years older than me, so like I inherited the DT50. So do you think if you didn't inherit that DT50? You think you would have ever kept on riding or you even would have started in the first place? Or? Yeah, definitely, because, you know, the only alternative was to ride a push bike, which is what I did until that point. And then obviously when I was 16, I could ride a motorbike. So it was like, yeah, definitely, let's do that. You know, it's less effort. So what about when you, when you said you're on the push bike? I mean, did you, did you start on, um, on those quite early or was that something that was quite new? Or? Yeah, well, I had, to, I had to ride to school. Um, school was a fair way from where I lived because mm. uh, the 
yeah, it was a fair way from where I lived and my parents didn't, well, my mum didn't drive at the time and my dad was always away. Mm. So, so we had to either walk or cycle to school. So, so I used to cycle and then obviously at 16 when I could ride a 50cc, I thought, yeah, that's the way to go. So that's how okay. I started. And then like my brother, when I was 17, I got a 125 on L plates and then I did my test. And then from there, I just got bigger so, bikes. So is that, that you started off, there was a need and then you had something in the family as well, so it, was, it seemed like the natural, natural progression. Yeah, and also, um, I wasn't really in a position to do a car licence. There wasn't money available to do, you know, driving lessons and things like that, so that was uh, something that came later. But basically, those first couple of years, from 16 onwards, mm. I was able to ride motorbikes, so that's how I got started mm. with, like, personal transport you know and then obviously subsequently when I went to university that was four hours away from home. Oh, so where, did you, where did you go? I went to Norwich. Oh go Norwich, go UEA. Yeah UEA. Yay. UEA. <laughs> and uh, yeah so that was like four hours away and, and obviously because in the first year I was in um, dorms um, university accommodation and they always used to have to you had to empty them every every Easter summer every holiday because really? they used to rent them out yeah. okay no, so you, to stop them, I think. yeah so you couldn't do that on a bike anyway you yeah. know because you had too much stuff so you had to move in and move out a couple of times a year so before I went to university I took my driving test and then after that I was in cars while I was studying yeah. And then as soon as I um, got out of university, I got a, a bike because I was unemployed mm. initially. Was that because uh, of the cost or was it more because of the Yeah, yeah, because of the, of the cost, because I was unemployed. I just thought, well, I can sell the car mm. and I just ride the bike to interviews. So I remember going to lots of interviews on my, uh, I think it was a Honda CB360 mm. um, yeah, in yeah. my suit with like waterproofs from top to bottom yeah. and then when I arrived at the company that I was going for an interview for I had to peel it all off and then I mean, go in in my suit I mean don't think anyone would go to an interview on a motorbike these days but that's what it was like back in the day I think it's interesting you say that, that they wouldn't go these days so what do, what do you think it's changed in the culture that during your time that that was acceptable and perhaps normal do you get some freebies as well yeah I got some <laughs> insects yeah I just think that um, you know, the standard of living was lower. I mean, like, if you think back to our parents, they wouldn't have even had a motorbike to go to an interview. They'd have got on a bus or a tram, or they would have cycled. Mm. So then, in my generation, it was like, okay, you, you might have had a motorbike. And these days, as the standard of living has, has progressed, people of that age usually have their own car. That's just the way it is. I mean, if you were living today and you're doing the things, do you think you would have gone through the same progression? Or do you think you would have perhaps gone straight onto the car? Almost certainly straight to car, which I think is why there is a lack of young motorcyclists. Mm. Because in our parents' generation, or like post-war, going a bit further back, post-war that was the only personal transportation that people could reasonably expect to be able to afford. Mm. And then they had a, like a sidecar so the wife and the kids could come with. Mm. And um, yeah, I just think it's progressed now to the point where any person that's 17 more or less expects their parents are going to pay for driving lessons, they're going to buy the first car. So you go straight from nothing to a car. Okay, chicken chips for us. Well, oh, brilliant. <laughs> All right, well, looks like we've got some nice tasty food here. Yeah, should be. We're, we're at the excellent here, at the Twisties. Yeah, a little bit of advertising. Twister. Uh, Twister, real. sorry. In Twister. Mahaka. There you go. With cotton chips twice, with mushy peas. Yum yum. Well, let's uh, get this, let's attack these and get some of these pine sorted. Yeah. Right, we'll see you on the next pint. Second pint, yeah, exactly. Right, so it's a second pint, second question time. Well, mate, let's start with drinking it. If you've got a pint, you've got a drink, haven't you? Cheers. Cheers. And take a little taste of that. Oh, they, 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 they yeah. But we got covered. I don't fancy tapa. Yeah, I don't fancy giving the flies free beer. Yeah, the second question is uh, when you're riding, you got your you got your, you got your lid on. 
Um, what do you think about what goes through your head when you're riding? Yeah, I think that's the good thing about it, really, is because, um, especially because I ride kind of difficult roads, like twisty roads, roads with potentially, you know, dodgy potholes and things. Um, yeah. I think I'm mainly thinking about what I'm doing when I'm riding, so, and I think that's why it's so helpful to me because um, it's probably the only time in my life when I don't think about my existence, my day to day, you know, financial survival, you know, because I'm a self employed person, I don't don't have a salary so my income goes up and down and I can stop from one day to the next. So basically every day, every night you kind of think about your life and how you're gonna finance it. And yeah, really on the bike's probably the only time I switch off because I'm really focused on what I'm doing. Um, you know. So I think that's good because yeah, because like I say, I ride twisties, I ride roads possibly with bad surfaces where there might be potholes as well. And I'm almost always riding roads that I don't know as well, so I don't know what bends are coming up. So I'm really totally focused on what I'm doing. And I think that's probably the, the therapy aspect of it. Definitely having all your worries just kind of push to the back, you know, not, not, not here in the front of your mind, just somewhere out the back. Yeah. Do you think that you could probably do without that therapy? If you were to say tomorrow, not have the ability to ride for whatever reason, what sort of effect do you think it would have on you? What would you do as an alternative to riding? I'd probably find something else to occupy me, I think. I think I probably would. I mean, I've had other hobbies in the past which I've had to give up to be able to motorcycle, you know, because I haven't got <coughs> enough time for multiple hobbies. So, yeah, I'd probably find something, but I think definitely motorcycling is really the time when I forget my life and I just enjoy the bike and the road and the scenery. So it's, it's a super therapeutic hobby, definitely. Just, just off the top of your head, that's not, probably not a very fair question, but what, would, what could replace it? Oh, I've got so many things that I'm into, it's mad. Come on, tell us about you, Gary, we all want to know. Oh, I used, well, I used to fly like FPV drones and stuff, you know, and, okay. and do freestyle drone stunting and videoing my flights with my drones. Um, so not autonomous drones, not like DJI drones that do everything for you, but ones that you actually have to control to not crash. Oh, so how do they work? Do each, does, so you've got, is it dual or quad or quad bladed? Or? Yeah, they, they were quads. And then you have like an FPV system. So you, you have a camera on the drone and you have goggles. So you can see, because obviously a drone that's that big, pretty soon you can't see it anymore. So you can't just, control it from here so you're actually like sat in the drone so you can actually see while oh, you're wow. flying so you have goggles on and you're just like flying and so you can what, go anywhere so what got you into that I don't know i just thought it was something cool to do and then it kind of took over my life a bit like 3d printing as well because i 3d printed because that was the next thing that came along i thought oh that sounds cool let's do that so i spent a year learning about 3d printing and 3d printers and then i bought one and then i modded the heck out of it you know i bought a standard printer and then i just improved it mm. and so so that was the next thing but yeah initially before that it was it was uh, fpv drone flying and that got to the point where i built my own drones i mean i just used to buy all the motors and frames and flight controllers and vtx and rtx and just sort of solder it all together and set it all up with as a software you can use beta flight to set it to program the flight controller so i just did the whole thing just used to buy all the bits make a drone and go oh that works and then just fly it about and basically you can fly it as far as the video signal carries okay. uh, you know the, the uh, remote control signal is a lot longer than the video signal have you, so have you not been tempted to use these other hobbies like the drone drone work and 3d printing in the er videos 
damage? Well, yeah, because I have 3D printed parts for my Meteor. So oh, was it the, the, the bracket or something? Is it? No, it was the, um, the mirror plugs. Oh, yes. When I fit the bar in mirrors. Mm. So, yeah, so I've still got the 3D printer and I can still do that. So that's that. And, and I've also still got FPV drones. But I haven't really got time to fly them. Um, what would you say has been the downside of biking for you? Sure, there is one really. I mean, what I don't like, mm. I don't like um, the fact that you have to have like a lot of gear, or you think you have to have a lot of gear, mm. like buying biking clothes and boots and jackets and trousers. Yeah. I mean, I've got so much stuff now that I've just decided I'm not going to buy anything else. Um, you know, because I've got stuff there and. Yeah, I've got no room for anything else. <laughs> but when you get into biking, it's like, oh, you know, I mean, I must have at least five helmets that are all under really? five years old. Jeez. Um, wasn't it Wasn't it one question per pint? I'm just saying, you know. Uh, no, I'm just making sure I've got the question done properly. I've got to, got to, get, my, got to get my money's worth. Because I mean, if I have to drink as many pints as you're firing questions, this is yeah, going to be a see. bad night. Uh, let me see. Uh, I've done about the runs. Um, right, so go, going back to when you're riding, you got your lid on. Um, how much? How, how, do you do you find you've got a different personality at that time? Do you find that you put your lid on? Do you change and become someone else? Or are you? No, I'm just as tedious and obnoxious as I normally am. You're not, you're not just a bad, you're on not my own. Garage, I'm just on my own. Nobody can hear me banging on about stuff, so it's good. Yeah. You know, I'm so, not annoying anybody. Well, unless they happen to watch my videos, obviously. No, no, you mean we have a good channel. It's always interesting. Yeah. You no, know, but it's always like I was always quite curious when a lot of people put their helmet on. Like, so some people you suddenly feel it's find them. Being right obnoxious gits, and as they're yeah. riding along, they're like quite, quite, quite nasty little nasty riders. Well, it's like for me, as soon as I put one on, I just find I'm in a calmer place. Yeah, and I think um, I don't stress. Uh, no, I think yeah. to be honest, I'm probably more me on a bike than I am if you came around my house. You know, if you came out around my house, I'm probably in the middle of summer and I'm probably thinking about that and I'm not really in, in a position to engage with you because I'm preoccupied in some way mm. and obviously on the bike I'm not preoccupied with anything so on the bike I think probably I am more me than uh, any other time because I'm just on my own there been there are no demands being placed on me and I'm just there riding my bike and you know in that moment, I'm probably more me than I am at any other time. Even more, when, more than when you're riding a car? Driving probably, a car? Probably, yeah, because the thing with a car is I tend to listen to music in the car, so you'll probably catch me singing quite a lot in the car, which I don't tend to do on the bike, although really? I, do, I do do a little bit on the bike from time to time. So, so what's your favourite karaoke hit, is it? Um, yeah, I, I've never done... I did karaoke once, but no, I'm not really into karaoke. I just sing if I feel like it. Mm. So what was it has the, to come from the soul. So what was the last song that you were singing when you had your lid on? Or are riding? Uh, well, actually, my latest video, I did go dooby-dooby-doo quite a lot for some reason. I don't know why. It's just when I'm in that place where I'm having fun, I just start going dooby-dooby-doo. There you go, folks. You, you hear, you heard it first. Yeah. We now know where the dooby dooby doo came from. Yeah, that's what I do. But uh, yeah. All right. I, I think uh, I've already got my second question's worth. Yeah, I think so. Because look how much pint there's left. I mean, it's like another three pints to go. This is hard work. Plus, we've got a bottle of whiskey in the hotel as well. So. Ooh, there's a bottle of whiskey coming. Well, well, yeah. Let's make some progress, shall we? Yeah. It's going to be hard work. 